Hey everyone, hope you're doing great. Um, so I've kind of decided to build a short series on motion planning and different planning algorithms. Um, this is like one of the key areas in autonomy and uh, in self-driving cars and a lot of research is being done in this field. Uh, so I wanted to start off with something simple, which is like uniform cost search or Dijkstra algorithm. This is like one of the key building blocks and uh, if one understands this then understanding rest of the advanced algorithms becomes a lot more simpler so starting off like the problem statement is that we want to find the shortest path and you can just imagine that like if you are in a city and you want to go from point a to point b there are so many roadways that exist connecting different point a to point b so the idea is that how do you find the shortest path and the way we translate that problem is that we put that into a graph structure so in graph what you have is this network which is connecting different nodes to which is connecting different nodes with these edges so uh, the edges are basically shown by these arrows and what it shows is that you can go only in the direction where these arrows point so in this graph we have uh, six nodes and uh, all of these nodes are connected between by these arrows and our goal is to go from the start node s to goal node g in the shortest path possible path, uh, in the shortest possible way so in this particular example it's sort of easy to see that there are only three paths that exist one is SPG which has a cost of 10 units the other path could be SADG which has a cost of 8 units and the third path could be SACDG which has a cost of 9 units so the shortest possible path is SADG but if, if say like if you had a city and you were trying to go from point A to point B and trying to find the shortest path then you would have a very big graph uh, consisting of these different nodes and finding shortest path by this particular method would be really difficult so you need a more systematic way of doing it and that's what text algorithm gives us but it has its own shortcomings so which we'll discuss it later so uniform cost search goes something like this you have two lists one is a path list and one is a cost list and uh, when you're starting off from node s you append that into the path list and the cost associated with that is zero because you're starting off from this place the next thing you do is you start exploring its neighbors so so you explore neighbor a and neighbor b and once you have done that you cut off the start node s because you've already explored it so the cost associated with sa is going to be two units and the cost associated with sp is going to be five units and now we start exploring path sa because it is possible that the shortest path lies along this particular way so again we do the same thing we explore sa and its neighbors are going to be d and c so those particular two paths get appended and the cost associated going from going from s to c is four units and going from s to d is six units so that thing comes here and then again we cut off this path sa because we have already explored it so in the remaining thing we have three paths left in this situation path sb path sac and path sad and their corresponding costs now again we go on path sac because this has the least cost and we do similar way as before we add node d because that's the only neighboring node that this has and we add the cost that it takes to do to go from s to a to c to d once done again we choose the node that has the least cost after cutting out cost uh, cutting out the path sac and 
we choose path SP and uh, the neighbor that is right next to node B is G. So SPG gets added and the cost associated would be 10. Now, we have a particular path that reaches goal node G, but if you see that there are two other paths that exist within this list, which is SAD and SACD, which have a lower cost than SPG. So it is a very high possibility that your optimal path might be along either SAD or SACD. So we need to explore along these particular routes as well. So we start off with SAD because as you saw in the previous slide that this has the least cost, which is of six units. Again, we explore its neighbor, which is just G. So SADG gets appended to path list and the cost of it comes, which is about eight units. Next, we're gonna explore SACD, which has a cost of seven units after cutting out path SAD. And after repeating this, what you observe is that we have just these three entries left inside the path list and their corresponding costs. And the path, the shortest path that we pick after this equation would be SADG because the cost corresponding to it is the least. And since we have reached goal node G, we are actually done. So, so we basically found a shortest path using this very systematic approach. And if you want to translate this entire logic, you can do it using this particular algorithm structure. So few kind of indicates uh, the path list that we just saw in the previous slide. And while that path list so the first step would be to put up the start node inside this particular path list like we saw earlier. And while this path list is not empty, we start doing the steps that we just saw uh, in the previous example. So, so whichever path P has the lowest cost, we kind of remove that. So the canceling procedure that you actually saw where we used to cut out these particular paths, that's indicated by line two. So if the head of that, if the head or the tail for that matter happens to be the goal node, so for this particular instance, we saw that this node, this particular path was picked and the tail was goal G. So if that happens, then we return that path. Otherwise, we don't do this step and we start going to the next step where we explore different neighbors. And on doing that, we keep on repeating this uh, entire logic. So if we don't find the goal node as we saw in this example, then this algorithm would return a failure. So it would tell that no, it's not possible to find the path from node S to G. However, like in this example, a path definitely exists and this algorithm was able to find you the shortest path. So that is like one of the key strengths of this algorithm that it is complete. So complete means that uh, if a path exists between a start node and a goal node, it can tell you that it exists and if it doesn't then it will be able to tell you that the path does not exist so just want to conclude this uniform cost search by highlighting a few key points so one thing is definitely that it's an extension of breadth per search so breadth per search is like when in this example if you had all the edge weights equal and you wanted to find the shortest path that would be the breadth first search algorithm. So uniform cost search is a generalization of breadth first search. Then the second property is about completeness and optimality. So as we saw, like 
in this example and as I explained earlier that it's complete because it's able to find a path between the start node and goal node if it exists and if it does not it's able to tell you that no the path between the start node and goal node will not exist as we saw in this particular logic when it returns a failure and optimality is there because it's able to give you the shortest path the third point is that if you see this logic it's kind of going along the path costs so you are not kind of seeing the path depth so path depth so if 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 somehow you had the positions of these particular nodes like say if you had an xy graph and a some somehow you knew like these where these nodes were located in the position then you know that goal now G is kind of far away from S so you could use that path depth information as well to make it a more informed search but in this particular case we don't use that information and we're just seeing all the possible combinations of, of, of uh, going from one node to the other node so so that is something which is not that good because if you have bigger graphs then you would have to do exponential number of computations as well as have a, have to allocate a lot of memory because if you see um, here we had to list out all the all the possibilities and we were doing a lot of computations for each and every particular path so that is something which is not that good and uh, we'll see that there is an algorithm called a star which kind of incorporates this path depth knowledge and uh, it really helps in improving the algorithm's performance so thanks for watching and um, if you have any questions or comments just feel free to leave them in the comment section below thank you